2092, the Hypatheia Space Telescope identifies a gas giant around the star Beta Hydrae. The new planet, Nema, would only be one of many exoplanets in the universe if not for the moons deemed capable of supporting life. 24 light years away from Earth, it is close enough to be within human reach. Twenty one oh seven Interstellar Colonial Carrier Daedalus leaves Earth orbit. Packed with a crew of nine thousand, mining gear, and scientific equipment to investigate the Hydra system, it will reach twenty per cent of the speed of light. Twenty two thirty ICC Daedalus enters the orbit of Nema. Its moons are barren, desolated wastelands unable to support life. Pumping stations are built around Nema to extract the valuable gases within. Asteroids are broken up for materials, and colonists establish outposts around the moons. 2249. Some colonists attempt to return to Earth. A clash between colonists pushes some of them to attempt to fly Daedalus back to Earth, only to meet opposition from the others. The carrier is destroyed in flight. 2250. Life goes on. As the colonial government has broken down, the mining and exploration companies remain, with no hope to return to the known world. Life goes on in relative peace. Hello everyone and welcome to my first play ever of Helium Rain. This is an interesting game that was suggested to me by a friend. I've long been a fan of space sims, um, specifically space sims that revolve around trading and adventure more than combat. So my friend suggested this would be just my kind of game. I've had a lot of experience in games like Elite, and a little bit of the Star Citizen beta. So I'm interested to see what this game is like. I'm doing something a little bit different with my voiceover this time. Um, because I wanted to focus on the game and enjoy it in its fullest, I decided to do the narration afterwards. I often find when I'm playing a game, especially one that has a lot of simulation aspects, I tend to go very quiet because I'm too busy focusing on the action or what I'm doing and I forget to narrate. So this is just setting up your colours and patterns and preferences. As I mentioned before, I have absolutely no knowledge of the game so I decided to go through the tutorial. The tutorial mostly holds your hand, although there were a couple of points where I was a little bit confused about what I needed to do. Docking was a bit confusing as well. If you've ever played Elite or any of those other space simulators, you should be able to find your way around this game pretty easily just by following the tutorial as far as basic controls go. Standard controls are your normal WASD for thrusting, um, Q and E for rolling, and the mouse for yaw. One of the more interesting features of this game is it does feature semi-realistic Newtonian physics. For example, when you thrust forwards, you'll keep heading forwards in that direction for forever, unless you thrust backwards to slow yourself down. It is made a little bit easier with things like the mouse control. as the mouse will return back to center when you've finished turning. So this basic control tutorial is very good. The only thing that I felt was missing is that it didn't bring any attention to your status panels in the bottom. So I was a little bit confused as how to tell speed and things until I had a bit more of a look around the UI. I'm also not sure if there's a return to center or stop button. There probably is, but I haven't had a look through yet. So if you get into a, a bit of a panic or you're spinning and you want to come out of a spin, there it would be handy if there was a button that you could press just to stop the ship dead in space. The soundtrack of the game is very nice. It reminds me a little bit of KSP, Kerbal Space Program. It's fully instrumental and orchestral, and not 
loud enough or involved enough to become a distraction. In fact, you don't really notice it while you're playing the game. So at this point it's just teaching me how to do basic navigation between systems. There is no concept of warp in this game. You can only travel at a certain percentage of the speed of light. So because the game's played in real time, you can skip time or fast forward time to get to systems. So you just set your course and then click skip to skip to your destination. But the game's day counter does increase. The game does start off reasonably slow, which I appreciate. It doesn't just dump you straight into any sort of combat action. There is combat in this game, and there's also politics, which I'm really looking forward to. But for me, I prefer games that focus on either story or adventure, or in this case trading, over action. Targeting is done with the middle mouse wheel, so you scroll up and down to cycle through the targets, and they're arranged in distance from your ship. One thing I found a little bit later on which does come in handy, when you have a mission selected, and you're scrolling through your targets, the target that you need to select is highlighted. So in the top center of the... you can see that it says targeting MSYWMN and it's highlighted so I know this is the correct station that I need to dock with. Docking takes a little bit of getting used to. I feel that the tutorial could be just a tiny bit more in depth here but once you've done a couple it's pretty straightforward. Also, later on in the game, you can purchase an auto dock. So I'm just being overly cautious here, trying not to fly into the space station at uh, extreme speeds. When you get closer to the space station, the information panel on the bottom right changes from your cargo bay inventory to your docking computer, which you'll see in just a moment. And so this gives you all the information you need to dock. The tutorial doesn't mention, or at least I didn't see it mention, it also overlays circles onto the screen, which you can use for alignment as well. So as we head up to the station, you can see the two circles, and then there's also a line in between the two circles. The idea is to get the two circles perfectly in the middle of each other, and then have the line vertical from top to bottom. So by using this visual guide as well as the information in the docking computer on the bottom right hand corner, docking's pretty straightforward. So I thought you had to aim for the the center of that circle, but you actually have to thrust up a little bit so that your viewpoint is just above the center of the docking ring. I also notice when you're rotating, it seems to rotate on an unusual axis. So as you rotate, you're not rotating directly on your center, your ship actually pans as it rotates. It's a little bit hard to explain, but you'll see it a couple of times in this video. So at this point, I'm still docking just by looking at the information in the docking computer. I didn't even notice the two circles. And this is another part where I got a little bit confused as the tutorial just says, when you're done trading, 
undock from the space station, I didn't see anywhere where it said how to start trading, and in this case, what I needed to trade. After a little bit of experimentation, I finally found the middle mouse button brings up a menu which allows you to trade, undock, and a few other items. But again, even at this point, I wasn't too sure what I needed to trade. The tutorial just said when you finish trading. So I decided I'd just pick up anything that I could and kind of hope for the best. So I filled my stock up with H2O and undocked and then the tutorial picked up from this point onwards like most other space adventure games your trades are driven by contracts so you'll fly to a station pick up a contract which will say grab this from this station and deliver it to that station and that'll be the end of the contract in these the hour or so that I've spent playing the game it has been a little bit of space truck simulator but I understand um, I was told by my friend who recommended the game it does start slow but give it some time once you really start getting into the game you can start automating trade routes hiring other pilots even building space stations so if you find a system that has a shortage of a specific type of supply you can build a space station to mine that supply It's an interesting mix of empire building and space simulation. The other thing to bear in mind, of course, is this is still pretty early on in the development cycle, so it's, it's a, from what I've seen so far, it's a very good start, and I'm really looking forward to getting into this game. So I'm just having a look through the different contracts to see how they work, and also how to track them. It's pretty straightforward. So obviously there's a big track button. Um, I wasn't too sure what that would do, but it does highlight the targets on your heads up display and that enables the highlighting in the top screen. So as you're cycling through the targets, it will highlight the ones you need and then put an arrow on your display. It also highlights them in the system view. So for example, here you can see the forge and the spire are both highlighted as those are the systems I need to go through to complete this contract. It does feel a little bit lonely at these early stages of the game, seeing as the space stations are just menu driven at this stage, there's no interaction with NPCs or any sort of graphics to show you the inside of the space station. I'm not sure if that's something that's going to be worked on later on. A lot of people would probably say it doesn't need it because it is more of an empire and trading game, empire building and trading, than space sim as such. Here I get to test my docking out again. I'm still a little bit unsure about, at this stage, the docking, how to, um, I thought those circles were highlighting one of the docking ports on the other side of the station. But eventually I get the hang of it. I've played for about an hour so far and I can pretty much dock straight away every time now. Although I have just purchased the auto dock system, so it'll be interesting to see how that works. I haven't had a chance to test it yet. So at this stage I thought I had the supplies that I needed for this station, but I didn't. So I was hoping I could just use my supplies to complete this part of the tutorial, but I did need to pick them up from the station that it told me to pick them up. There was no shortcuts. So 
So I dump the cargo and then I head off to the NHWHYP hydrogen pump at the spire. This was my own fault for not paying close enough attention. This wasn't a fault of the tutorial. I just wasn't quite sure what I needed to do, despite the fact that it clearly explained. This is always the fun of playing a a new game for the first time with everybody watching. The contract highlighting in the right hand corner does hold your hand. It literally says go to this station to pick up this and then go to that station to drop off that. Occasionally I found, um, especially in the earlier releases of Elite, sometimes the missions were a bit vague. Go to this system and do this. It didn't say where in that system you had to go to achieve your goal. Whereas this does say system and either outpost or whatever you need to do. Overall, the graphics of the game are very pretty. The interior of your spaceship is a little bit sparse, but again, it's relatively early access. That may be worked on a bit later on, but all the information you need is there, and it's very functional. I haven't come across any bugs in the game yet. Although I have damaged my ship a couple of times, just from inexperience. Like that. At this point I was confused as to why it wasn't docking. The docking computer said everything was all good and that I should be able to dock. And then I realised that I need to thrust up a little so that I can see the circles and then it automatically docked for me. Trading straightforwards. Every station has inputs and outputs, and obviously the contracts tell you what you need to pick up. One tip I was told by my friend who recommended this game to me is, even in the tutorial, when it says pick up, say, 25 of this and then deliver it to this station, because you get paid through the tutorial, so when you drop them off you get paid for those supplies, fill your cargo bay up, as the stations will receive as much as you have. So instead of just taking on, say, 25, take the entire 100 that your cargo bay can hold and then deliver it all off to make a little bit more money to get you started a little bit quicker.
I think it was at this point I noticed the circles and how they were lining up as I was lining up with the docking port. So I decided to start using those in conjunction with the docking computer. And this is pretty much the entire first hour of the game. Just picking up supplies, dropping them off, getting paid until you've done five contracts and then it goes into a little bit more about how to do research and technology. Another idea I had to try and save a little bit of time was to try and find as many contracts in the same system as I could. The plan being run a whole bunch of contracts in the same system to make money faster and to save having to keep travelling between systems. I don't know if there's a concept of fuel in this game yet, I certainly haven't needed it, but I know some other games can get a bit tricky if you need to buy fuel as well, as that's another cost you need to manage. So here we pick up the steel for the haulage. And then we just de-dock. And I'm not sure what happened here. For some reason the ship just started flying all over the show. But I managed to regain control. But it did do a little bit of damage to my ship, which I fix up a bit later on. I also found that you can go straight to inter system travel while you're docked. You don't need to undock and head in a random direction and then look for the next system in your map. So that saves a bit of time as well.
and then we drop the steel off. And that's one of the contracts completed. So I skipped through the rest of the contract tutorials. Once you've done five, it steps into the next part of the tutorials, which is ship repair and technology research. It took me a little while just reading through. It says to click on the repair button on the top right. I was looking for a bit more of a, a status field to do with my ship, but eventually I found the repair all fleets button, which seemed to do the job. So I cleared off some of the tutorials to make a bit more room so I could see what I was doing. And it takes, in this case, it probably depends on the amount of damage, but two days to repair your fleet. But the time skip button does actually time skip to the end of that repair as well, which is really handy. It seems to jump to any event, whether it's arriving in a system or a new message coming in. So that's, it's quite intelligent. I was a bit worried that it wouldn't detect that my fleet had been repaired and I'd end up wasting a lot of time sitting at the station doing nothing. The technology research is very much like leveling up in an RPG. You have five levels of research and you can upskill each area one at a time. So I spend a bit of time reading what each one would offer me and I couldn't decide between the instruments technology or the auto docking. Instruments speeds up your research which will be handy but I'm getting a little bit bored with docking all the time so I decided to use the auto docking level up and that's pretty much all you can do at this point in the tutorial till you have some more experience. So that's pretty much it for this video. Um, I've been playing for about an hour at this point to get here. Just doing those contracts takes a bit of time, finding your way around and uh, there's a few, I guess, side quests as well that you can do, picking up VIPs and dropping them off, but the mechanics is the same. So let me know if you like this. Let me know if there's another video or a game that you want to see and I'll probably do it. But in the meantime, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.